And good evening. This is Joseph Gibson coming at you live, 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 live with a very special edition of Starfinder, Pathfinder. Which one is it? <laughs> if you want to welcome my co-host, Mr. Jeff Ball. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to Simply Second Edition Podcast Vodcast live tonight on Twitch TV forward slash GM's Cut. We are mixing and mingling tonight with my co-host Joe Gibson tonight, our resident rule lawyer, and been promoted to host of this show because Rob, we've thrown him into deep space. We've tossed Rob into the world of Starfinder. Now, Rob will be having his own show very shortly, and it will be broadcast Sunday nights at 8 p.m. EST, every other Sunday at least, which leaves every other 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 Sunday for <laughs> me and Joe to do things like, oh, I don't know, perhaps Mr. Jared Mercer would like to share his homebrew world and show you how easy it is to drop homebrew stuff right into Pathfinder second edition gaming using the core books because here we are talking about it's simply second edition and we will cover that later but tonight we have raggled fresh off of the la shores three hours behind us <laughs> coming fresh out of their attack of opportunity podcast two gentlemen uh, that need no introduction mr jake gyllenhaal and mr joss wheaton um no no okay but you can't tell which yeah. is which <laughs> we have <laughs> Sean Connery and Joseph Mandela? No. Um, we have Connery and Joseph, the gentlemen, the creators of Starship Impala podcast, a homebrew setting for the Starfinder universe and rule set. And yep. mm -hmm. something we didn't cover in the earlier interview, guys, is do you use the actual canon places or are you like in deep space? You know what I mean? Like, is it your in, own? In season one, I set it in the vats, so it all takes place in like a different area, and I kind of ignored the main setup. But in the new game, in I'm two, I'm using all the Paizo planets and places, but just my own storylines and my own people. You know, so not not too many characters from Paizo, but they're Absalom Station and Castrovel is the two places we've been so far. I think I had Diaspora in like the main game because yeah. like. Talia, one of our um, players, and she was this from Diaspora. So I was like, well, we have to have that there. <laughs> right on. So two guys that know Starfinder way better than us. Now, Rob has been deep, deep, deep undercover reading for weeks now about Starfinder Universe and <laughs> loving it and loving it. So we yeah. decided to give him his own show. And thanks to Fantasy Grounds, our sponsor, not only for this show, but Age of Ashes. And now, Rob, I'm happy to publicly announce without you having technical glitches and disappearing every time I tried to say it in front of you, <laughs> that the good folks at Fantasy Grounds will actually pick up your show, The Frequency of Screams Adventure Path for Starfinder, Static Fear, with your host and GM, Rob Hammond, will be coming to you live in October, officially sponsored by Fantasy Grounds. Let's make the Starship and Pala guys cry. We got it one without even trying, you know. How do we get a sponsor? No. Um, but I've asked them to stick around tonight and tell us, you know, share their GM wisdom. Um, Connery did season one. Josh doing season two. These guys know Starfinder. Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. We just met. Give me a break. You look like Jake Gyllenhaal. No. I just can't get over it. <laughs> I went downstairs. The wife's like, Jake Gyllenhaal? You have Jake Gyllenhaal? No, honey. Get, get back on the couch. You look, You can't meet him. He's, uh, <laughs> He's too handsome. He's too handsome for me. And you won't be able to. You know. Um, but, you know, actually, speaking of our earlier interview where you were talking about snapping your fingers, Connery, and just making uh, things yeah. happen in your world. And I said, don't do that. Every time you do that, Robert Downey Jr. dies. You know, the wife and I do have an understanding that, like, if Robert comes to the door, I'm just like, go, go, be free. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. comes to your door for your wife. What are you going to do? Fight him? Fuck no. I love you your work. Your wife, damn it. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. I just, the improbability. You gotta... snap Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> you snap <laughs> Die, motherfucker. <laughs> Die. Yeah, I probably would in the moment. Uh, but, get it, but you know, to her for the argument so that you get the dinner you want, uh, you know, you got to be supportive. So anyway, uh, moving on. Tonight, what are we doing? Are we in Starfinder? Not quite yet. Are we in Simply Second Edition? Well, technically, Starfinder uh, is kind of a breach. It's between First Edition. They've improved and, and did some of the things for laser guns and, and space. And we're going to talk to the guys about that tonight. Um, and Second Edition is a, moreover, a push into you know, the new rule set for Pathfinder objectivity. 
So in the middle, I still think it counts so we could pull this off in this show. We're going to talk to Rob about what he's got going because it's Rob here that's been poking around the, and let me just reveal this here, dun, 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 the Starfinder version for Fantasy Grounds, our sponsor, telling us how wonderful, how easy it is to make characters and such. But we know a little lore, very little about the world, the lore. I mean, raise of hands. Who's actually cracked the Starfinder core book? Anyone? I did. A wee little bit. A <laughs> couple, couple pages in, maybe at best. But who needs that when you could just like click a button and go, hey, here's your races, da, 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 da. you know, here's your backgrounds, da, 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 you know, kind of thing. So that's what we're going to show you tonight. We don't have a lot of time. We will be switching over because we did promise Jared Mercer, no relation to Mr. Mercer of Grit. Grit, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, that, that, Mercer. that show. Yes. Well, I can't say his name out loud. <laughs> Oh, because he'll come. Yeah, you say his name three times. He shows up going, I'm not related to your guy. <laughs> Stop texting me. Um, so let's start off with Rob. Yes. Here we are at the character selection. And we are showing, we've invited these two right into your game. And these guys aren't familiar with Fantasy Grounds. What are we no. looking at? And then whenever we hit a roadblock, or Rob, if you have a question about the lore, the book, the rules, because we certainly don't know anything, I got these two handsome gentlemen here that could answer questions for about 30 <laughs> minutes. So let's let's on with the show, gentlemen. Yeah, great. Rob. Well, as everybody, number, number first thing is uh, we have to decide who is going to play what part. I mean, that's one of the biggest things about running the story. Everybody has to fill a niche somewhere, right? So I'm going to need a pilot. I'm going to need a tech guy. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, is your campaign heavily magic or heavily tech? Um, for, for us, it was, uh, my thing was heavy uh, tech, I guess, because mm -hmm. I, I deal with a lot of like cosmic weirdness that happens, but our core player base, we had a, uh, we had, we, we didn't had have an any magic users. Yeah, we had an operative. We had a, uh, what you were, mechanic, engineer, mechanic, Solarian, and Solarian. And and a soldier. soldier. Okay. Uh, so for this new beautiful. season, Connery's playing a mystic, so we're having a little bit more magic in it than mm -hmm. we did last season. So, yes. okay. so what we're hearing is Pathfinder or something, 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 Pathfinder, something, something. As you guys use these terms, could you possibly translate them to a Pathfinder oh, sure. audience? So, so what is basically we had a rogue, so that's basically mm -hmm. a rogue archetype. Um, okay. the, mechan the mechanic, uh, what's like a it's good hard equation? To it's like maybe maybe, maybe a it's ranger. Like the, a ranger. That's what I was about to say. Because it's not really magic, but you you got a you get an animal companion, but it's a drone. Mm -hmm. Or you can choose an AI. Uh, my character had an AI mm -hmm. because he was an android, and I thought it fit him more. And soldier, fighter, it's, paladin. Yeah, it's pretty basic. And then the Solarian is like kind of like a sorcerer meets a monk, pretty much. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, there's, it's hard to draw a Pathfinder comparison. It's a Jedi with sorcerer. gravity or light powers. Come it, on, yeah, guys. Exactly <laughs> it's that. Basically, it's a Jedi. <laughs> I, yeah, I know that one. Be to like, <laughs> I, I like having to like the Green Lantern aspect of it, especially in like, our friend Jacob, who plays our Solarian. I was like, I just went full like him. Like Green Lantern Star Wars was like my entire thing with his whole arc. <laughs> oh, my. We've got to keep uh, another set of rules out of this there, though. There's a lot of games being played here oh, well, yeah. we're, 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 we're trying to translate to like you know since you don't know starfinder exactly you know, picture mm -hmm. this or relate to this it's so it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. all good there so we're looking at character selection um now a character jam everyone gets excited we're gonna do a character jam think about it it's a bunch of guys going hang on i gotta read this and now we're dead air so we don't want to do that so what we're gonna do is my guys have already started to click around on their sheets and they're starting to build their characters as far as they can get. They might've stopped at race. They might've stopped at class. They might've stopped at skill set. And as we go around each part, we can hit on a different person. So Rob was asking about the roles, right? So yes. you're reading the adventure, Static Fear. It's horror in space, right? Yes. Okay. Actually, it's, 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 it's so unbelievably complex once you read a little deeper into it. It's just, but yeah, we'll start with it. It's horror set in space. Okay, but you're not supposed to tell us too, too much, much right? Way. Okay, so if you, you can't do that, what about the ship positions? Can you guys back me on this at the Impala? You need a pilot, you need a gunner, yes. you need engineering, you need a science a guy, you need a cap. Like that's science five. Officer. There's five. So of there's us. So five. One? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We have we have a team of four. We have four, like, so we don't we do four use players. a science officer. Yeah, we don't well, use a science officer because the skill um, packages can be picked as feats or archetypes. So you actually have a subset of skills. Yes. Mm -hmm. So even though you're a fighter, you make you pick skills that round you out on the party exactly. so you mm -hmm. match your skills to your background and then whatever you choose to be. Rob, like, um, 
I'm curious, you're, you're doing a, like a horror space one. That's totally my jam. Have you like watched, like I watched Event Horizon recently. I'm like, yes. that sounds like so freaking fun. <laughs> like I just watched, I'm like, this was a sick and cool movie. <laughs> Yes, Event Horizon is is is, is a classic, yeah. definitely. You know, we, uh, we were talking about doing a large cast, and then if you die, you're out because it's space ooh. horror. You know, yeah, that's spooky. You, you guys, That'd be cool. yeah. Well, you know, you can you can go on a date in LA on Sunday night, or you can hang out with these guys. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you, hang, you know, ditch, ditch that background echo, so the the sponsor isn't is okay with audio quality, and we've got two red shirts. I mean, <clears throat> two qualified Starfinder players. I'll, I'll I'll be the boldest red shirt you've ever met. Right, right here, you know. <laughs> but, I'm just saying. Like, like, like you're saying, Jeff, you're wondering about filling out the crew. And that's right. what, that's why so many characters this week. You can pick what you want and then just, as a secondary, just pick a handful of skills to, to make you worthwhile on the ship. Like, okay. yes, there's ship combat. Yes, it is going to be, actually, there's a lot of it involved in the beginning. But once you hit planet side, like, your pilot still has to have other skills. You know what I okay. mean? He has to have a background of something else. And they've... I was impressed with how easily the characters went together. Mm. Now, bear in mind, I didn't have to whip out pen and paper and do all this. I got this right away. I was like, oh, I can just do it like this, right? Yeah. I still had to fall back on the archives of Nethys to see the order of creation. Mm. If you follow the order of creation for everybody from what you're used to playing with pen and paper and just drag and, uh, convert it to drag and drop to fantasy grounds, you can be done your basic character in 20 minutes, a half hour. Nice. Cool. It's very cool. Okay. And and that that's what I was saying. Is like I said, it's actually so much easier. It's uh now that's because second edition has so much depth to it. Like there are so many crossovers and skill packages and types of magic and everything else. It's a much bulkier system, right? Because it's a it's not additive, it's uh subtractive. You you, you subtract from your character as opposed to adding to your character in most categories. Like when we were putting in, like for example, I was making a rogue. All the rogue stuff is there. And then you have to remove what you don't get. And you have to follow the tracker for what you're supposed to remove. So you're saying like when we picked a race, it gave you 10 types of dwarves. And you're like, well, I'm not a forged dwarf. I'm not an underground dwarf. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm this dwarf. And it was a process that's right. because it loaded that's all. Where we, and that's where we kept running into troubles. We weren't communicating very well. We were, we we're all right in there. But okay. none of us had spent the time to see how it worked. What okay. With that knowledge applied to this, like I said, it's just unbelievably quick okay so sh we've got we've got four um yeah. we we may have possibly we may have matt witt cheryl ball and these two famous gentlemen joining us at any given time you know as an auxiliary cast you don't know but let, let's start with the core four possibly five by the time we launch you in october um how about race Corey? i know you've picked a race yes yeah. sir i have i've decided that i'd like to be one of them four arm guys uh, Kasaka. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Please know the names, like that forearm guy. You know? <laughs> Your background will be interesting to say the least when it gets written. Mm. Well, hopefully this we can have some. Cool. Hopefully we can have some fun with it. So do you oh, have definitely. a pic Do you have a picture of a Kathas uh, Kasata? I'll uh, grab it. Of Mufasa that you can show us. Mufasa. So close, not yeah. quite. Forearms. Okay. So. Um, what can you tell us about this race? Is there anything, any quirks, um, anything about their lore? Guys, Starship and Pala guys, sorry. Oh, so they they are from a starship called the Idari that came into the Pact Worlds. And the Pact, people from the Pact Worlds made a first contact with them that went peacefully. But they still mostly live on that colony ship. And Kasatha were actually in Pathfinder. Uh, they One of the books they added so they took them and, and brought them into starfinder as well I and so that. that's fun yeah i think part of the lore is that they even in pathfinder they came from some distant planet or mm -hmm. something and i then, remember an npc and iron, they, iron gods popped up i think that's what it was yeah, yeah. i'm from space and everybody's like sure you are <laughs> sure. yeah and so that's now they're on this this big colony ship called the idari and that's where all the kasatha are from yeah, weren't they, so a, interesting. weren't they a colony ship? And by the time they got here, man had evolved. And they went, oh, gee, the planet's taken. We'll just orbit. Maybe yes. Die out. <laughs> Not they to kind of, yeah. Maybe they'll yes. die out. Maybe so they'll die out. The in Pathfinder. And oh. so now the humans are in space. And everyone on Galarian is in space, too. And, and, and they're what, allies okay. now. So, Connery, what can you tell me about this? 
with those forearm the guys. No, the forearm guys. Oh, they uh, wear the they cover their mouths all the time. Why Joe's going to know more about this. He, he yeah. he's like actually I've been oh, reading oh, more yeah. of the lore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, I I made but... up all my own lore and stuff. So it, <laughs> he, he's the guy that's going to yeah. be everything. My yeah, race that, are the Mufasa actually... and they're lion people and they what? Okay. Exactly that. that. Yeah. <laughs> they say that they're they don't know like outsiders don't know why they wear those claws over their mouths, but every Kazafa does. It's, a, it's like a, it's a cultural thing. Yeah, don't they believe it's very um, intimate to show your mouth? Yes. Yes. Mm. You know. Is because... that Justin's guy? No. Okay. He's a Lashunta. He's a Lashunta. Mm. You know, they're, they're, they're just really afraid of the movie Redemption. Well, like, you got to burn him out. <laughs> <laughs> Four <laughs> arms are doing this. Get away from me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Slapping together. Yeah, no, really. Just... Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, cool. Um, so, Corey, yeah. why did you pick him? Because they have four arms. Yeah. He just wants extra tax, ladies and gentlemen. Well, actually, well, you know what? I don't, <laughs> you, there's I don't a, score extra, extra attacks. That just no. means I can hold more than one thing at a time. There is uh-huh. a feat you can take to shoot all four. If you have a small arm in each of your four hands, there's a feat called Fusillade where you can shoot all four of them in one turn. Oh, oh that you, would be very cool. There you go. Yeah. But also, but also remember, if it's already in your hand, no action to draw it. Like as easy, Exactly. You know, you, your preserve right. actions. Right. I was actually thinking more along the lines of an outlaw character, um, more hands, slate of hands, maybe a little bit of hacking. Yeah. More, yeah. more hands, more computers, more things on the go. If there's a critical fail, do you just put it in the wrong pocket and can't find it again? Or? Absolutely. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, ha ha, oh shoot. <laughs> so another question for Connery and Josh, the outlaw, is he talking, he's talking about the backgrounds now, yeah? Yes. Yeah, he's talking about the backgrounds. You can have They're several different themes. Ones. And themes. And that's one thing they added to this. Uh, so you have your racer class and your theme and they keep adding more themes the core book i think has seven or so yeah. and then all the, the adventure pass will add more to that careful uh, uh, careful leaning cool. back there the void keeps taking you you're just sorry <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a really interesting way to just add more to your character and they're not the powers from them aren't too op or anything so they're not going to be huge game changing yeah, a lot of them are just a like you get like specific. if you're if you're checking like you're an outlaw and like maybe if you're stealing a pickpocketing something or you get like a plus one or like maybe half or something like really weird. You, you know things about what an outlaw would know, and yeah. you know, and you know, I was an ace pilot because I was the pilot of the ship, so that helped a lot. It helped me maneuver the spaceship better. Also, uh, your lore skills give you the lore of the background yes. of vehicles. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so it sounds like a combination of like traits from first edition, where you mm-hmm. could look in the adventure and yes. specific traits to tie you to the adventure, and then yeah. there's the um, the backgrounds from Pathfinder Second Edition. See, I told you guys it was halfway in between the two. You're yeah, right. Believe me, yeah. mm-hmm. halfway in between. <laughs> um, so we've got a forearm guy who's a bit of an outlaw. Have you decided on a class, Corey? Uh, I was thinking about an envoy, maybe. Ooh. And what do they represent? In layman's term, if you please, gentlemen. Bard. Bard. They're going to be the one buffing the party. Oh! Mm-hmm. Um, smooth talking, that that sort of deal. I was but no magic. Envoy. But no magic. That's always, he goes for this dope race, a cool outlaw, and he's like, oh, I'm a bard. <laughs> well, basically, you, you could be like like you a movie star or like some kind of underground celebrity at, or like, like a punk rocker would be super tight the, the phil collins <laughs> drum solos you could do with four arms like this is that, please tell me that i'm just saying oh geez but um, you the con man. classes also though are um a lot different like variations like they're not like just mm-hmm mechanic there are extreme mm-hmm. differences so yeah he can be that very charismatic person or he can be the world's best assassin yeah mm-hmm. like that's very cool jared you're peeking your it, mic. Back you, up. you say bard but that really doesn't touch on what that class really is like that that he could literally talk his way into somebody else's embassy take all of their money go out and have them tip him yeah, like that, that's, that's like, uh, kind of what i'm thinking yeah, it leans yeah, on your gameplay more than anything else from what I've read. Like it's your style that's going to decide which way he goes. But rather than have a whole bunch of rules so that each character has to have like, I mean, how many feats or archetypes or paths or whatever, whatever you want to call them, you are perfecting it during your character creation so that you have a fully formed idea of your character when you start playing. 
you don't just roll the character go let's see what he turns out to be while you make the character you got to have an idea in mind when you're making him mm-hmm. or it will mm-hmm. be useless you'll your skills will be all over the map yeah cool yeah. so while we're still on jared i get you turned down your mic a bit jared you're peeking there uh what have you yeah, got? I think I did. what have, how, how far have you got in the world of race class and theme i'm actually going to probably be the most difficult one of the group just because i really haven't found a race that i actually feel like i would enjoy playing as and i've been looking at a lot of the different races but i just haven't found one yet that really makes me like go "Ooh, that is totally what i'm going to play that's totally going to work for me no there's Um, an otter otter person race that exists now and that's pretty fun (laughs) (laughs) well uh the the alien ethology, like the monster manual has braces in it that you could also flip to PC. They're, they're noted in there, you know, so that would be a question for Rob. Would you allow right. a, a, like an alternate alien humanoid race? Okay. I have no problem with that. I don't even have a problem with uh, a custom race, but the background is going to be imperative. I need to have a way to tie it, tie right. it in somewhere. It can't just pop out of nowhere. And that was going to be my second question. Um, even though I haven't played a lot of the, I haven't played any of the Pathfinder adventures. I do know that they put um, character creation stuff in their first book. So is there any stuff that's tied to the screen? Any frames on to Joe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> moving <Ready> on, on. <laughs> it's always the best part where he's about to say you know and one last thing i just want to ask is and this is the most important thing yeah <laughs> I, I i blame the internet in la but while we do have you two still moving about um mm-hmm. joe yes race class ideas race class ideas uh race still pondering okay just and yeah still pondering because it's a new system for me so i am still reading yep there's lot. so many options too there's like a lot there's a lot to choose a from especially in the races hey so, jared's back you were saying jared? <laughs> he's just <laughs> kind of like oh. <laughs> we lost you at um what was he talking about good the second turn okay oh yeah. no no sorry the um using alien races right from the handbook uh rob's right. cool with that and then you were asking the just character creation stuff that's in this campaign uh is there any character creation stuff we need to worry about no the only the only thing they really added was uh, a paranormal investigator it's open to you to look at right now if you take a look it's there it has some very interesting powers the scream thing is just a riot i just your character literally when something bad happens gives that high blood curdling shriek <laughs> it gives a bonus to your allies because they're made aware of what there's something wow. bad going on it uh causes a dc negative on the ones that fail their check but also bear in mind other monsters in the next room can hear you scream too mm-hmm. so like there's a lot of bonuses it gets like right in the- <laughs> it is literally right out of a movie all the skills the paranormal investigator has oh yeah i'm about to show you how awesome tabletop audio is um oh please yes jared like 1940s you know, woman, black and white, ah, sees the mummy and like, what's wrong? My coffee, you know, it's something, it'd be awesome. Anyway, that's up to you, dude. Cause if you don't take it, I sure as hell am. <laughs> Damn, sure. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. All of you be paranormal except best scares is Scooby-Doo. Yeah. That's the first thing I was like. Oh. Well, that but, almost makes you the, uh, Number one, not to die until the very end of the of the game. <laughs> like you know, it's the part of the, it never dies. Now, part of the character creation for the paranormal is that there has to be a mystery that you are seeking out or searching for. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be foremost in the game, but there's always something in the background. There's always some big mystery you're trying to solve. So I mean it allows for a lot of offshoots and a lot more now you guys like I said you didn't choose you choose homebrew over AP. Mm-hmm. And as Jeff knows, unless I've been playing with Jeff, I didn't touch them. He he ran the APs, but I was always homebrew. I always created. I had to use the setting, yeah. and I used the the used it as a timeline so that I didn't screw yeah. it up for other people. Mm-hmm. So is is you? I'm taking you're following the same idea. Like, well, we still may want to do an AP some point at some point. Yeah, right? I'm actually for a, I'm doing going to do a five E one because everyone's doing a five E one at some point. But we're gonna do like Wrath of the Storm King or whatever that one is. But we're yeah. gonna spend a lot of kind of homebrew stuff in it as well joseph you keep appearing and disappearing yeah Yeah. well i think one of the things we did like with season one 
I'm at least following the world a little bit more closely. Yeah, so I just kind of we're using the gap. That's what's great about Starfinder. Yes, the gap, the gap is amazing. Where nobody Where knows what happened. The gap. So it's such a great way to use as an excuse, like, oh, like the last campaign just took place during the gap, and we don't know what happened. You, know? yeah, like, you just erased like... all my hard work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's, it's really great. Like, I'm really excited to. I want to investigate that in Europe. Cool. And, and by the way, gap's all about. And also remember, everybody, you're not going to find Galarian. Don't look for Galarian. Galarian is right. there. <laughs> like, they stress this over and over again. Like, don't even waste your time trying. Whatever yeah. they've got planned for that is, 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 is you know, that's that's worth the price of playing Starfinder. Just yeah. to find out what the hell happened. If it takes yeah. 10 years, it takes 10 years, but I'll stick around to find the end. I'm a totally completist. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I'm actually running sci-fi suspense off of the soundboard for tabletop where you guys are talking about what happened <laughs> during the gap, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, tabletopaudio.com uh, is free and nothing against sirenscape it is a great platform and i would get it if i could afford it but i i found tabletop audio first i'm loyal to tim he does great stuff he has soundboards he has all free ambient music to run 10 minutes and we use them across the board in all of our shows at the role mongers network here and you know as you guys are talking here i'm just giving some little samples here i mean we've got he's got um probe droid that sounds like the star wars Probe droid. Yeah, like, you know, the one that, you know, you know like one of Hoth, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, the evil empire one, yeah. You know, there's like creatures growling and shit. Like, like we're going to have a lot of fun. But I don't see any Jared screaming. That's kind of, you know. I, I, for, uh, look for something in horror. Just search horror scream. You will find yeah, it. Yeah. And so, now, and again, mean, while I've got guys who played Starfinder here, um, do you find, I was taking a look at, I mean, I'll bet I bounced around a lot when I started looking at the books, like reading one, oh, look, jump over here, jump over. And I was, I was all over the map. Is there any problem integrating that many different aspects? Have you had any trouble with that? Do you ever got to the point where you was just like, damn, I wish that guy didn't play that character? Like, <laughs> No, I haven't yet. Mm -hmm. I think because the galaxy, you, you can kind of, everyone's on every planet. You know, it's yeah. not too, at least if you're when you're in the pack worlds, if you're out in the, in the vast. We had one guy make up his own race mm -hmm. and then i had to yeah, incorporate I said, that the race incorporation is great too like i said yeah make yeah. your own race i'll, I'll find a exactly. world exactly so it. i just i just put his Here's planet that. out in the vast his home world and you know he's part or, of the crew and mm -hmm. or you blame it on the gap there just happened to be a exactly <laughs> yeah. the galaxy. they don't still, know where you they can walk anything still, around still uh, uh as the corporate section of the you know we have an official sponsor and i'm pretty sure they would like you to try to utilize as many of the books that they did give us for free so if you, yeah. if well, you actually, have an idea you, that you could you know. but if you look in the alien archive all the instructions are there for it oh well, yes. is it okay, okay. cool yeah, they don't leave you hanging. Like they have provided you with. That's why I said I don't care if you want to create a custom race. I know the rules already exist. Exactly. And they're designed for just that. If you can't find, and same thing with creating like a themeless character, it's nowhere near as crippling as it was in uh, Pathfinder. If you didn't pick an archetype or the right stuff, you sucked. Like <laughs> from the gate, we're here. If you go themeless, and or decide your own theme, you can bulk up on whatever skills you want. So you can tilt that character in the direction you wanted right from the gate very cool it's cool no that's yeah. that's that's seriously cool now i've just could done a quick little rig here oh, you guys you, you guys um oh jeff. oh jeff we can't hear you jeff we can't hear you we've lost jeff. you into the void into the void fine i'll switch it back i was trying to set this up so that voice meter you guys hear me now yes yes, yes. um that you'd hear what i play you know, on on, um, on the sound pad here, sound pad here. But um, I must have, uh, you know, I must have buggered something. But I did, I did find a lovely woman screaming. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been very alarming to hear. Now, I, 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 I know you guys can't hear. You have to, you have to play this back. But everyone, look at Jared. Yeah. Jared. Okay, look scared, Jared. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. It's you, it's you or me, buddy. One of us gonna have to be the paranormal guy. I have. To, you're asking me to look scared. I've been practicing all my other stuff. You know, <laughs> been scared his whole life. <laughs> so no force scared. decisions. There's obviously a lot still on the table, you're guys. Jarrett, Jarrett's kind of hung up on on custom race. What about a class? Just forget the background, the paranormal. What about a, a character? Class okay. So I have narrowed that down to either a. I want to either be a demolitions um, mechanic. <laughs> who like has this whole thing of if it's in his way he'll just blow it up like 
you know, because hey, Jared, the, Jared, have you ever yeah. played a space game before? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay, just you understand well, how many people are just going to run screaming when they see you coming. <laughs> Like, so no. this is why Jeff. Or how many people will be blown into the back of space? Exactly. <laughs> I've played Traveler. I've played Traveler. Uh, I've also killed an entire station worth of people before. It's okay. Oh uh -huh. yes, Traveler, the only game where you can die in character creation. <laughs> there, done that. Have four T-shirts. There you go. Only four. I was normally the DM, so I got to watch other people die. <laughs> it's going to be a recurring theme like before we got back on the oh, air here we had some technical problems and i come back into the phone call here and jared is like telling these guys how he's killed yeah, so many <laughs> yeah. they just keep running yeah, good luck with it with the oh pathfinder TV podcast uh, yeah <laughs> um if you blow stuff up in space though like doesn't that punch a hole in our ship and we all get sucked out into space like this ideally, is why yeah. <laughs> i was kind of leaning towards um maybe a is it the solarian who gets the um, ability to go out into space without any need of anything or is that the the it's mist? a race there's a the race the oh is it the yeah. race the sarcesians mm -hmm. okay well um, 14 foot tall skinny looking know, yeah i'll get to you know i'll get to you eventually just launch me out the tube captain <laughs> Yeah, like the crazy. I'll make I'll make my own exit. Thank you. Beep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Click. Thank God we got rid of that guy. He had like double helpings in the mess hall, and he just scraping along the ceiling. You're just, just like slamming against the window. I'm back, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, like have a Thor moment. Just yeah. yeah exactly. There you go. <laughs> that is a good like they're all looking on the table is the strong handsome man <laughs> all poking at him anyway um okay so obviously lots of decisions for jared joe yeah yes still reading it you know still reading yeah this is what i still feared deciding. of like, yeah well <laughs> this is what I um as i was telling you guys in my interview i spent 99 percent of my gaming career dming instead mm -hmm. of playing have I played? Sure, lots of times, sure. But consecu consecutive sessions, like X amount of sessions, rarely, not since like 20 years ago. Did I ever finish mm -hmm. a module? I can't even remember. There was always that just the DM got unavailable or something, and then all heads went, yep, I'll take the chair. You know, <laughs> you know. uh, And I'm happy there. I, I, I have to admit, I do love the big chair. I love telling the stories. Me, um, me, and, me, and, me and Joseph so, have like a similar thing with that. We're, we both like DMing a, a lot, and so... I feel like a different thing every time where you're like, I'm playing now, and it, you're like, okay, I'm playing, I have to get useless. And now it's on me where I'm like, okay, now I'm actually playing the game and I have to get used to what's happening. It, it's hard to take your DM knowledge. Don't you think a DM would be fearless? Mm -hmm. But like when you get squished into a player's avatar body, you're like, you're not touching anything. You're not looking. Yeah, you're just like, <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. What happened? It's a wonderful map of, I know, giant map popped up and filled my world. Jump that out to oh, show you something world. there. Okay. Ooh, uh, this is one wow. of the first places everybody's going to get to, so I'm not really revealing too much. But for you guys over there at Starship Impala, on my version, there's little right. pins in each and every section. And those pins contain the information and the encounters. Oh, wow. wow. So when you create it, you drop the information, you put your encounters in there, and then you literally just click and open them up. Oh, that's great. Wow. Yeah, if you watch our Age of Ashes show, we yeah. actually show the GM view and I walk you through oh. that type of thing so you can actually oh, see, cool. you, can, you have to see the game from the DM's point of view. You just got to put up with yeah. me DMing. And, um, <laughs> and also for, for, for the homebrew side, like there's a few things I want to add into this, obviously. Uh -huh. And all I do is create the pins, drop them in. Cool. And that way, if they stumble across them, great. If not, I can literally take that encounter from where it is and move it to somewhere else without somewhere having else. to rewrite it or move it around. Also, you can custom make all of these maps because Fantasy Grounds has its own scaling. So as long as you keep your map to scale, you can make all your minis and everything else scale from within Fantasy Grounds. Wow. Whoa. That's great. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah. Yes. I, I was stumbling with this when I first got it, trying to do too much at once. So I've just focused on a few things over the last couple of weeks, and that's mm -hmm. one of the ones because I've been creating custom maps as well. Is this a custom one for you too that you made? No, no, this is theirs. This is, All okay. credit to the guys over at Paizo. They did an amazing yeah. job. Yeah, that's this. beautiful. Um, I know how it was done. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it was done. Then that that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, no, I found the uh they actually have the token sets available in Fantasy Grounds for a lot of this stuff for furniture, mm -hmm. oh. characters, everything. 
So if you want them, you can just pay a couple of bucks and add them in, or you can grab them offline too. I mean, if you get them with the fantasy ground stuff though, they're all scaled properly. Cool. So you can that actually nice. spin them up and down. Like for example, if your character gets cast in a size growth or something, you can literally just spin on the character on your icon on the screen, and your character will get bigger. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I've dropped a link in the chat here for you guys to check out later. Uh, Paizo ah, is starting to launch official trailers for their APs, and they show that yes. zooming in and zooming out of the character art throughout the book. They have voice uh -huh. actors and music and everything. And it's this trailer that switched us from the swarm going, yeah, we're going to do Starship Troopers to like, no, 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 October's coming. We have to Ooh, do Space yeah. Horror. Time to get spooky. Yeah. So my question is, can I, because it's Paizo's, can I show that on our stream and have us it's it and talk it's, about it? if it's public domain you can I if it's know. a commercial also we're doing this airing a commercial like we could air it and send them an email saying like hey we showed this on our show we're sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> well, it's, what's the expression it's better to ask forgiveness than permission well, that's, we're, that's we're, my rule we're we're allowed to um to show uh certain stuff so um well, for example though jeff like this map here this is a piezo creation yeah but we paid to use it in fantasy grounds okay so there's no problem with us showing it all you're doing is giving you're not actually you are not using it to 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 gain any benefit okay you earn no money from that that's right. right you're just showing say here's where you want to look at it okay there's so no problem with that let, let's try something guys everyone get on that link okay is it in the chat yeah yeah so we can all you can all re we'll do a, we'll do a reactionary this is starship impala and our crew Ooh. for static fear reacting to the official paizo trailer for starfinders ap signal of scream three two <laughs> one go <laughs> some dead space bombs. Hello? Is this thing transmitting? Yeah. If you can hear me, you must stay away. We, we came here to this resort on an asteroid in the diaspora for a relaxing vacation. Everything had been provided for us. Drinks by the, the jacuzzi, spa treatments, <laughs> gourmet meals. It, it was like a dream come true. But something, I, I don't know what happened to everyone that's what happened with the rat gun in the jacuzzi mild takes <laughs> images flickering in the corner of the eye weird uh, urges uh, but then that weird urges. went missing and what after someone discovered the travel writer dead in the ventilation shafts a hole came up from the old mining tunnels below and now I'm everyone sofa. dead or insane repeat do not yeah. come. You'll fit right in there, Cory. Look, you're on there the table. There is only death here. I see that. And pain. <laughs> oh. Sweet, liberating pain that will open your oh. mind to a new reality. Hey, it's Rat Guy. free your soul from the there shadows of typical morality. Yes, surely you can hear it by now. In the back of your brain, the sound that will transform the universe, the signal of screams. <laughs> <laughs> that's some hellraiser shit <laughs> yes so i won't be joining this show i'm going to be busy um elsewhere and uh we need suckers i mean victims i mean <laughs> so, so yeah, i don't want to play this anymore it's like very scary yeah. um so See, that that oh. is what you're in for and i can't help that this map looks like a resort rob yeah. <laughs> you know, like the big, we went to the resort, everything was fine. Oh, look, there's a rat getting in my jacuzzi. Then shit got crazy. And I'm looking at a resort, man. Like, I, I don't like where this is going already. Well, you don't even get there right away, to be honest with you. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a leg to go before you even get there. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I wanted to save mine till last, but since you guys are still deciding, uh, I have some questions. So I have a concept idea for a character. Uh, it's a little complicated, but I'm, I'm trying to get, a lot of pent up I wasn't ever playing out. Okay. So if I were to do the Scooby Doo guy, the, what'd you call him? The paranormal investigator. The paranormal yeah. the paranormal Scooby investigator. Yeah. Okay. Just be shaggy. Right. Be Zach Bagan. Uh, my <laughs> idea is picture a really, really, really old paranormal investigator traveling the universe. He's got his tinfoil hat. Like no one believes him, mm -hmm. right? This is a mm -hmm. man who runs around by himself. He needs 
a companion, a pal, an alternating personality android liaison, or a pal for short. <laughs> and yes, pal rhymes with how. I want to play an android. I want to play a multi-personality type android that's in demo mode being the right person for the right guy and being your buddy until someone claims ownership none of that well i mean you, you, you sure so like he's his own <laughs> best friend <laughs> well no it's like the old man owned me but the old guy the old guy oh. they find they find me in a shipping cargo container gotcha. and I'm, with the, I'm with the dead old paranormal guy so i've been with him for years so i know all his skills i have his skill set mm. right and, I thought you were saying you're like multiple personality disorder. I'm like, you're like a malfunctioning no. android. <laughs> well, no, he he's actually programmed that he has a couple of like, say, six or ten default settings. Do you guys remember Batty from Fern Gully played by Rob Williams? They kept switching his channel and he was doing all these impressions, mm -hmm. right? So my idea no, is uh, the android, when he doesn't have ownership, you know, the, the android died. I'm an old model mm -hmm. that came from before the freedom of the slaves of this race, uh, right? Uh, so he thinks right. he needs to belong to somebody. What's going to mm -hmm. happen with a venturing party? Venture party, you're going to go, okay, everybody. It's like, I actually hear this through the crate, right? We all, we all share what's in there. And the droid can't process this. So he's stuck in demo mode, mm. you know? Like so so for, for Jared, you know, like he's one guy, whoever he thinks Jared needs that kind of friend, you know, for, for the mercenary, he's like, yeah, we get the, you know, you got the cigar. He's like, we got this, we got this, you know, full metal jacket. Right. And the next guy, you know, or like I said, if the wife joins the cast or we got like a good looking, uh, um, good looking, uh, guy, you know, that's got a pretty mouth, you know, you get wrinkle yeah. suave and mm -hmm. it's okay. I'm here for you. You know, this type of thing. <laughs> and he's stuck in demo mode until they pick a personality. That's this cool. is funny. I like that. That's, That's really funny. And he and like I said, the obvious choice would be the envoy. But if we have an envoy, mm -hmm. uh, the best your best companion would probably be either like the pilot, or just mm -hmm. like a protector, like a mercenary. You know, he has your basic. I can yeah. shoot, protect you. I'm your. He's you know he's the guy in the trench with you. Anyway, so yeah, but his personality will adapt to you. Exactly. So he's this mm -hmm. insanely out of date, expensive, owned by rich and crazy people droid that do deep space faring missions that need mm -hmm. someone that's not going to get bored. Because you go in yeah. space with like a, a Scooby Doo shuttle, the van is really that big, you know, the shuttle with like one <laughs> yeah. guy, you're going to kill each other. You know, so oh, the, yeah. the droid is designed to be, you know, supportive, supplementive, you know. A, a proper companion, anything you want. Have um, you read uh, any of the iRobot books by Asimov? I've seen the movie. Oh my god, <laughs> you young people! I'm gonna... <laughs> well, thank you. I'll take I, I happen to have read all thirty of them, so but yes, I know exactly what you're looking for. We can anyway, characterize. It could be really cool, or it could be annoying as hell, really, really quickly, depending on if I, if I overplay it. So, like I said, there's that option where a character owns me, or the party owns me, or like you said, he just they just pick a setting. Uh, personality six is the least annoying, and he goes right. And then, of course, somebody goes along later on and pokes personality four just because yeah, it's fun. Yeah, right? yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's or, cool. Or whenever he's alone with this one person and they need help, it's like. <laughs> you yeah. look you look tense master how's it going you know <laughs> this kind of thing right you guys remember it, it, the, jeff depending on how much you want to invest in creating that character you would actually create multiple characters and switch between them ooh, that would well, be fantastic that's that'd how be it would be done ooh. that's the best way to do it i thought about that but like i said since he's a marketing thing the the demo mode the the second edition like think of a guy like stock factory yeah. you know a brand new computer he doesn't have a lot in him he grows and experiences right so basically you have this droid with all these experiences and stuff when the owner dies he reboots he resets he reformats he's got no, nothing. He's, but but then he but see that would that, affect all of his skills no he's first level yeah. he's like he reformat like the windows inside his head is first level dude with the operative class you know he's very adaptive yeah, and yeah. stuff and he has these these sort of um, superficial yeah. personalities, and as you pick one, pin that one, we got to pin that one. You and I are going to talk about this. Oh, okay, okay. That's going to be a much longer conversation mm. yeah. because and, uh, between the two of us, we can make it work. But we're going to kill. We're killing air here, and okay. I've really enjoying having you guys here. I really have. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, yeah. that being said, that we do have to take off now. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> no, this all sounds super cool. If you guys need red shirts, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, de de hat. De definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, so it's going to come down to two things. We will, we'll be shooting Rob at least every other Sunday. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. The show would be about eight to ten or eight to eleven, eleven thirty. So you for you guys, mm-hmm. that's you're three hours behind it's us. That, that would be yeah. we'd need you on at like four thirty and uh, we'd be pulling yeah. trigger at five and we'd need you for like two to three hours. Yeah. That's fine. Wake that's up early. Cool. Just play. Okay. All right. PM. Oh, PM. Oh, that's yeah. good. Okay. I thought I meant four thirty AM. I was like, this it'll be a struggle. Right but... <laughs> I'm so tired here in space. I will <laughs> rise from the dead. All right. All right. And- well, thanks for having us, guys. It was no, thank- super cool. And this but- all sounds like super fun and exciting. Yeah, thank you so much. And guys, thanks. tell us where they can find your show again once more. Starship and Pala. Thank you so much for being here. Our website, yep. www.starshipandpala.com. Our Instagram at starship.impala.podcast and on Twitter at Starship Impala. And we're on iTunes, SoundCloud, mm-hmm. and Google Play Music uh, Podcast. Yeah, hop on to season two. Fresh new start. Mm-hmm. We're Same four episodes cast. in. <laughs> episode five will release on this Wednesday. Yeah, every Wednesday. New episodes every Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we'll say goodnight and we're going to take yeah. a break here in the show and we'll come back and we'll be talking cool. about Jared's Pen and Dragon world and how easy it is <laughs> to get into his world and drop that right in second edition after the break so thank you joshua thank you. joseph joseph, joseph. <laughs> jake joe all and time. joss wheaton yeah. everybody thank you <laughs> oh, you guys have a great night thanks for joining yeah, you guys too thank right. you guys mm-hmm. see you guys later Okay, sorry. I was just, I just, uh, when we say goodbye, I need sort of a moment of quiet so I can run the transition screens and now it's on pause. And then I kill the audio feed so we can talk, but OBS can't hear us. Okay, word. Okay, so um, well, yeah, Rob, I just didn't want to make my guy too complicated. Guys, thank you so much. That that went a lot. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk yeah, soon. No worries. Yeah. Um, so email me personally at rollmongers at okay. gmail.com. Uh, your best oh, way to stay in touch with me is find me on Facebook. Uh, mm-hmm. okay. uh, Jeff and my Twitter. Yep. Yeah. If you go to Twitter and go GM Jeff Ball, all in caps with underscore spacing, mm-hmm. there's a cartoon emoji of me looking like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then you go to Facebook and put in Jeff Ball, Ontario, Canada. You'll find that emoji okay. and you'll know it's me, right? Okay. In Facebook, they have Messenger. Right. Yes. Right. And Messenger I have on my phone. So instead of constantly checking yeah. the Twitter instant messages. Yes, yes we can okay. streamline this. <laughs> we, and yes. it has that phone call aspect of like 30 seconds I need to talk to you and get way much more done. Totally. Great. Okay, cool. When do you guys need your own time? When do you guys shoot your show? When are you not available? Uh, it kind of varies. We do it about once a month, yeah. usually on a Saturday or a Sunday. Because I'd love to uh, cam you but... guys for like a one shot on our Star Wars show where you play a baddie, walk Ooh. on, shoot up the characters and walk Ooh. in. Yeah, everybody loves that. That'd be fun. I love it. Join That'd be fun. fun. Yeah. Yep. They'll be joining Rob's yeah. side. Yeah. My yeah. Wookiee died a painful death, and I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes. I think they fit in right well with that. Yeah. Jim Vader's Jedi yeah. hunting squad. Yes. Yeah, yes. There you go. <laughs> um, so seek me out a message, guys, and I'll definitely mm-hmm. talk Great. to you, and we'll get this set up. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, All right. Th- thanks so much. Thank thanks, you, guys. Thanks, Bye, guys. guys. Have a good night. Bye. You too. Joseph's iPhone is still with us. They're still listening. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Yes. What awful. There thing. we go. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I'd be down, Rob, with your idea about multiple. But like I said, we need to keep, we need for the audience, we need to keep the guy as simple as possible, like six character sheets, you know, different XP around. No, no. This, you know. It wouldn't actually, it wouldn't matter that. No, your XP would be a standard. Maybe you could even do it whenever we do like a long rest or, you know, that like every time we start a new episode, reboot <laughs> after your long rest. Well, the idea like is that you're, and you're reformatting, the you're reformatting a computer, right? And he has some basic stuff in him and he has this app where it's like, do you want to down? You know how they push stuff when you start up? Do you want this yeah. app? Do you want this app? Do you want, right? And this, and they'll run default demo modes. But it's the owner that picks the app going, no, I'm going to go with Facebook, fully download it, and he gravitates with that background. You know, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Anyway, so guys. So here we go. It finally actually loaded in. So Yay. that is the continent you guys are starting on. Um, I didn't like the stuff I was using for different indicators, so I'm redrawing my own indicators. Um, I'm, but lo- I'm if, lost. What are we? What? What? So in the chat. That is the continent. I can't get I out of Rob's loaded. map. Oh, not, not, it would be in the Zoom chat, not in the. Oh, well, let me uh, oh, minimize can, that. Well, can we go into your game? Because we want to do your stuff now. 
Yes, yeah, so let's, yeah. let's do that. Let me back out of this. I don't know how to be a player in this game. It's like, how do I leave? I'm so used to being the DM where it's like, click, click, gone. If you just right click and go up, you'll find it. Exit yeah. program. Okay. So we want to join Jared's game. What's Jared's game called? Give me a second. I've got to double check to make sure it's hooked up correctly. Like, Come on. Running test. Come on. 